In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about e-learning narration. Um, specifically, we're going to do a little bit of a comparison between the text-to-speech technology that's available in Adobe Captivate, as well as using your own or possibly another's voice to record the narration for all of your course. Um, when you are creating narration for a course, you do it slide by slide throughout your course and uh, each audio recording is associated with each slide. In addition, you have the opportunity to also record narration or, or some sort of audio for captions and, and various other objects within your course. In this case here, I have an advanced answer multiple choice knowledge check. Uh, knowledge checks for me, anyway, are simply quiz questions that don't actually contribute to the quiz. They're there just to let the learner know how they're doing and to check their progress. So in this particular case, we're just doing a little knowledge check here. And, uh, you know, what's, uh, what's happened so far is that we have a little narration that's done by text-to-speech technology, which I want to emphasize is really good. Let's just play that and see how that sounds. You can play it from the, uh, the timeline here, or you can also play it from the actual film strip as well. We'll play it from the timeline. Bruce has arrived on an international flight from Los Angeles. He is continuing his journey via Oceanic Airlines. Which terminal will Bruce need to go to? Okay, so uh, Bruce is obviously, um, you know, needs to make a choice and uh, assuming that you've uh, taken this course, you should know the answer to this. In fact, it's actually Terminal 3 is the correct answer. I'm just going to re, uh, readjust the, uh, the length of time for this. And uh, we can see here that we also have a bunch of captions on screen as well. Now, the text-to-speech technology is great. It's affordable, right? Because, of course, if I need to make a small change to one of those recordings in my e-learning course, I simply type in the uh, adjustment. So for this particular slide, I could actually go to the slide notes and go to text-to-speech and make a small change. You know, maybe I need to emphasize which terminal within the airport will Bruce need to go and then I simply press the generate audio button and it records a new narration in a matter of seconds less time than it takes to even play it so if a month from now or six months from now an organization needs to adjust a course that I've designed for them they can do it themselves the downside of course is that with the electronic voice the quality isn't still there. It's very good. It's a lot better than it was, say, five or even ten years ago. But it's still not going to sound like a real human being talking to you. And I think that there's value in that. There's value in having someone who is essentially playing the part of a classroom facilitator, except in an online sense, giving you actual feedback, encouraging you as you go as opposed to just an electronic voice who's just simply reading all the narration straight up. You know, and it, it's, it, adds, uh, it adds a dynamic quality to your e-learning. It really allows it to punch and make it feel real and alive. So uh, what you can do at any point, if you are going to use your own voice or the voice of a professional voice talent, all you need to do is uh, set up a microphone in a nice quiet room turn off the air conditioner, turn off the ceiling fan, and press the record button right within Adobe Captivate. It's that simple. So let's just do that real quick here. We'll do a new uh, narration for this particular slide. I'm just going to position the, um, the uh, audio recording window here for, uh, let me just close that there, and we'll just record slide audio, not object audio. And so I've got this here so I can read what, what is said about Bruce here. So let's make a recording. It'll ask me if I wish to calibrate the audio input. It's recommended that you do that. I'll go yes. And what I like to do is just read some of this text that's on the screen while pressing audio 
uh, or sorry, auto calibrate. If microphone is your input device, read a sentence into the microphone to set the sensitivity levels. There. So it's saying that it's going to preamp by 1.9. I'm just going to round that up to 2. That should be good. And I'm going to click OK and read this sentence up here. Bruce has arrived on his international flight from Los Angeles. He is continuing his journey via Oceanic Airlines. Which terminal will Bruce need to go to? So I press stop. I have my recording. Uh, you can do certain things like you can actually select uh, uh, if you go to the edit tab here you can select uh, blank areas in the recording and insert silence. This will get rid of uh, your breath before you read a sentence. It also might help to reduce the amount of background noise. If you want to take a look at this video here, and I'll put a link on the screen, um, this will show you how to use Adobe Audition, if you have that software, to improve the recording uh, even more so and also easier using uh, noise reduction technology. But Here's pretty good. You can do a lot of little fidgeting and editing and cutting and pasting. Uh, if you don't want that much of a delay at the beginning, you can actually cut out part of that. So I'm going to save this here and it will replace the slide audio for this particular slide. If you take a look at the timeline, you'll see that recording there. It's actually a little shorter than the uh, previous recording, so you can resize the length of your timeline here. But now we can also take it a step further and actually replace the captions with some narration as well. So you can use the same record button here and this will record object audio for this particular caption. So we're just going to hit record and I'll very quickly read the captions off for each of these items. Terminal 4 is not the correct answer. Please try again. Okay, we'll save that. And we'll close and we'll do one for this one here. You can also add audio from here as well. That's in the properties panel for that particular item under options. And we'll do a recording here. Terminal 1 is not the correct answer. Please try again. And we'll do the same thing for here. Slightly different narration. This time I'll use the record button just for variety. And Oceanic does not fly out of Terminal 2. Please try again. So we'll save that one there. And we'll do the you must answer one as well. You must answer the question before continuing. And then we'll do the correct caption. I'll just move this over here. Correct. Terminal 3 is the right answer. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. You see what I did there? I, I kind of deviated from the script a little bit. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. You don't actually have to follow exactly what's on the screen. In fact, there may be some, you know, some argument that it actually improves the interaction element as well. So let's close this and I'm just going to uh, center all of my captions on the screen here. It's, I spaced them out to make it easy for me to read them. Um, but we'll just uh, we'll just do this here and using the alignment toolbar, put them all at the bottom in the center there. So let's do a preview of this slide and see what it's like. Bruce has arrived on his international flight from Los Angeles. He is continuing his journey via Oceanic Airlines. Which terminal will Bruce need to go to? Okay, so now we can make a selection here. Um, I'll choose some wrong answers first and we'll see how that goes. I'll hit Submit. Oceanic does not fly out of Terminal 2.
please try again. Oh, okay, I, I wasn't sure about that. <laughs> so try Terminal 4. Terminal 4 is not the correct answer. Please try again. So now we'll try, I think the correct answer was Terminal 3, if I remember correctly. Correct. Terminal 3 is the right answer. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. So I think you can clearly see that this is a lot more of an interactive experience. I mean, certainly the interactivity really hasn't changed. You're making selections and hitting submit and getting feedback. But the advantage here is that it feels more like you're interacting with a real human being. Um, I am a real human being, but of course I won't actually ever meet the persons who are taking this course. But it will feel a little bit more personable. Uh, coming directly from me rather than an electronic voice. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.